It's my plea that the message of the Quran be widely spread. May the flag of Islam become more elevated than the rest. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen Amma ba'ad فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله أو بلوى النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم has said that a person who sends one thousand times daily durood or salutations or salawat upon me he will not die till he sees his place in jannah sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam salatan wa salaman alayka ya sayyidi ya rasul allah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya habib allah Dearest Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madani channel. Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal, once again we are blessed with this wonderful opportunity to participate in this silsala of Madani channel, Blessings of Quran. Inshallah Azza wa Jal, in this silsala we will discuss the ayat number 36 of Surah Al-Baqarah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَأَزَلَّهُمَ الشَّيْطَانُ عَنْهَا فَأَخْرَجَهُمَا مِمَّا كَانَا فِيهِ وَقُلْ نَهْبِطُوا بَعَدُكُمْ لِبَعْدٍ عَدُوٌّ وَلَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُسْتَكَرٌّ وَمَتَعٌ إِلَى حِينٌ Translation from Kanzul Iman then shaitan caused the two to slip out of it and remove them out of the abode. And we said, get down all of you as enemies to one another and you will have on the earth a place of settlement and provision for a time. This was the literal translation of the verse and inshallah as usual we will try to learn Ayah Karima word by word. فَأَزَلَّهُمَ الشَّيْطَانُ Word Azallah is derived from Zallatun and this word has several meanings one of the meanings is to go far away the other meaning is to take someone and the third meaning is to slip. Therefore, a slippery place is called mazalla. Now, all these three meanings could be correct at this place because shaitan caused Adam salam and Hazrat Hawa to slip. So this meaning is also correct here. Oh, he took them away from Jannat. Oh, he took them far away from Jannat. So all the three meanings of the word are befitting in this Ayah Karima. And it also shows very clearly that whatever happened, whatever 
حضرت آدم علیہ السلام اور حضرت حبا رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ ڈیڈ دیر ہیپن مسٹیکنگلی ناٹ ڈیلیبریٹلی بیکاز دیر واز سم ون ایلس ہو واز کوزنگ دیٹ مس چیف اینڈ ٹریکنگ ود حضرت آدم علیہ السلام اور حضرت حبا اینڈ دیٹ واز شیطان دا انسیڈنٹ آف شیتانز کوزنگ آدم علیہ السلام اینڈ حضرت حوا ٹو سلپ اور ٹو ٹریک دیم از ویری انٹرسٹنگ شیتان واز برننگ ود حسد ود جیلسی بیکاز آف دا اسٹیٹس وچ اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ بسٹور اپون حضرت آدم علیہ السلام therefore he was always trying to take hazrat adam alayhi salam from jannat oh his wish and desire was that hazrat adam alayhi salam lose that status so once he went to jannat although he was rejected and chased out of jannat but he still had access to go in and out complete ban was not put on shaitan so this is one possibility that he went to jannat the other possibility is that he went close to jannat at the door of jannat and he communicated with peacock and he made the mind of peacock that somehow this bird peacock must bring hazrat adam alayhi salam to the door of jannat and then he communicated with snake and he also convinced snake and the arrangement was that snake will put shaitan in his mouth hide him in other words and when peacock brings hazrat adam alayhi salam close to the door of jannat he will then appear from the mouth of snake and then he'll have a chance to talk So peacock started dancing and when this particular bird dances it looks very beautiful and he started moving backward Hazrat Adam alayhi salam and Hazrat Hawa radhiyallahu ta'ala ana they started enjoying and they started following So they reach to the door of Jannat and then suddenly snake took shaitan out from its mouth and this this is how shaitan had the opportunity to talk to Hazrat Adam alayhi salam and he said that oh adam alayhi salam i was disrespectful to you i did not prostrate to you and i got cursed and i got rejected now i want to fix things to pay it back and i want to help you to raise your station that you are pleased with me and you are no more angry with me and then he also said that you should not be so happy about your status and about your greatness 
because at the end you are going to die. And all these comforts, luxuries, status, and all that what you are enjoying will come to an end. Hazrat Adam Islam asked him, what are you talking about? What is this death that you have mentioned? Shaitan lied down in front of Adam Islam like a dead animal and he started acting like a person is in the state of Naza, the last moments when the death comes and the, the soul is about to apart from the body and started shaking hands and feet and shiver and he acted that the death is very painful and uh, very difficult, unbearable, that type of uh, demonstration he presented. So, Hazrat Adam salam and Hazrat Hawa, radiallahu ta'ala anha, they got scared and they said, is there any plan that one can save himself from the death? He said, yes, there is a plan. And the advice that he gave is mentioned in quran Karim, in Surah Taha, verse number 120. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and that is the statement of shaitan. Hal adulluka ala shajaratil khuldi wa mulki la yabla. He said, I will tell you and indicate towards a tree, or denote on a tree. If anyone eats that tree or the fruit of that tree, he will never die. And his kingdom will never come to an end. His kingdom will never be destroyed. And they asked, which is that tree? Shaitan indicated towards the same tree which was prohibited. So Hazrat Adam al -Islam said that this tree is a cause to take the kingdom away. And you are saying that if you eat from this tree, your kingdom will never go. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stopped us, he, he prohibited us. And if we eat from that tree, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be angry with us. If this tree was useful, why were we stopped? Not to go even near to that tree. Then shaitan put another argument. He said, مَا نَحَاكُمَا رَبُّكُمَا عَنْ هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ إِلَّا أَنْ تَكُونَ مَلَكَيْنِ أَوْ تَكُونَ مِنَ الْخَالِدِينَ Surah Araf, verse number 20. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not stop you from this tree because you will face a loss or there would be harm for you. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stopped you from that tree that you are going to be given the khilafat, you are going to be made successor and only the one who can be worried with other issues of dunya together with dhikrullah deserves to be the successor, deserve to be the Khalifa of Almighty Allah. 
And he said that in this tree there is effect that anyone who eats from this tree he will become an angel. And he would not be able to bear the burden of Khilafat. And he said, he gave an example, he said, see, the king only makes that person a ruler of another place or a governor of another place who is able to bear the departure from that king, separation from that king. Because if he is living there, he won't be able to go and do that job and take that responsibility. Further, the one who eats from this tree, he will never be taken out of paradise. And there is no death here. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided to make you Khalifa, and only that person can be Khalifa who can die. So, in his generation, in his progeny, uh, that Khilafat can continue. So these were different type of arguments that Shaitan was giving. And at the end he proved the point that this mumaniyat, this prohibition is tanzihi, not tahrimi. Mean, it's a light prohibition, it's not a very severe prohibition. And then he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not stop you from eating that tree. Rather, he has stopped you from going closer to that tree. Wala taqraba, don't go near. So, no way it says, don't eat. It says that, don't go near. That is satanic mind. That was his trick. So, he said, you don't have to go. I will go and break the fruit and bring it to you and then you can eat it. And he gave another proof. He said, okay, let's accept. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited from eating as you think or as you believe. So this prohibition was in the beginning because you were just created and you were unable to digest that food, that fruit because your system was still new and your system was still weak. Now with the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have become quite strong. So now eating that tree is no more harmful. So in other words he tried to convince Hazrat Adam salam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stopped you not for any other reason, but for your well-being. And your well-being because you were weak, your body was not used to foods, you were unable to digest, that would have harmed your body. And now you are strong, you have eaten food many a times, your system is used to food. So it's okay now, there is no problem. That was another argument that he gave. And then at the end he said, if you don't want to accept any of those logical arguments that I'm giving, then he said, I'll swear by the name of Allah. I'll take oath, I'll take qasam, that I'm your well-wisher. So the advice that I'm giving you is very good and it's useful for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Quran Kareem وَقَاسَمَهُمَا إِنِّي لَكُمَا لَمِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ He took qasam, he vowed, he swore to convince them that surely I am your nasih, I am your advisor, I am your well-wisher. So when he took qasam, Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, trusted him. Why he trusted him? Because Hazrat Adam Islam thought that there is nobody who can take false oath. 
because of his own obedience to the laws of Almighty Allah Azzawajal, and because he could never imagine that somebody can do such things that he wants to lie, he wants to deceive, he wants to trick, but to convince he would take a qasam. So when he took a qasam, Hazrat Adam alayhi salam trusted him. And he forgot to consult with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I mean to ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that okay what I'm going to do? He forgot about it. And because he forgot to ask, and then this happened, and uh, why should he not have forgotten? That was the, the plan of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. If he did not forget, how would you have seen this color in the world, what you are seeing today? The, the human beings coming on this earth and developing this earth. So there are many examples like Hazrat Yaqub when he sent Hazrat Yusuf with his other sons, I mean with the brothers, he forgot to hand over Hazrat Yusuf to Almighty Allah And Hazrat And 40 years or 80 years separation was caused because of that forgetfulness. But there was a reason, there was a hidden plan of Almighty Allah that because of the barakat of this separation, Hazrat Yusuf became the king of Egypt and Bani Israel had the chance to live and develop in Egypt, in Misr. So although forgetfulness is possible from the Prophet ﷺ, but our forgetfulness is shaitani, mean it's from shaitan. And the forgetfulness of Prophet ﷺ is rahmani, mean it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it causes beautiful results. Also keep in mind, that shaitan did not trick Hazrat Adam and Hazrat Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anha together. Rather, he worked on Hazrat Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anha first, and then he tricked Hazrat Adam. First, Hazrat Hawa ate that tree or the fruit of that tree, and then Hazrat Adam. And then, when that happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقُلْ نَحْبِتُوا اِحْبِتُوا is plural. It means all of you should go down. Or oh, the address is, to Hazrat Adam alayhi salam and his progeny, his children who were in the backbone of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam. And they were all humans which were going to come in future. So that's why the word plural is used. And this could also mean that the address was given to five of them. And that was Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, Hazrat Hawa, Shaitan, peacock, and snake. Also keep in mind that even though the order of coming down from the Jannat was equally given to everyone, but their conditions were different. Adam alayhi salam was sent down to the earth to establish the government, 
to establish the kingdom. So that was his condition to come down. Oh, he was sent down to go to the place of his body because his body was made from the earth, therefore he was sent to earth. And shaitan came down to cause the mischief. So it was not the place of shaitan to be on the ground. So he came in a foreign place to cause fitna, to cause fasad, to cause mischief. So you can understand with another example that Muslims are sent in this earth to earn and kuffar are sent on this earth to destroy their earnings. So that's what exactly happens that a Muslim is earning all the time and a kafir is destroying his earning all the time. And this time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ihbitu, get out of Jannat, all of you. This was second time that shaitan was chased out of Jannat. And after this, he had no entry. At the first, uh, when he was chased out, he still have access to go in and out. And that's the reason he went and he caused that fitna. And he caused Adam al -Islam and Hazrat Hawa to slip. But at the second chase, there was no opportunity for shaitan to go back to Jannat. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ba'dukum li ba'din aduv. To be enemy to one another. So there are several possibilities that this address could be to humans. That means some humans would be enemies of some other humans. For example, a disbeliever would be enemy of believer. Unfortunate person would be enemy of fortunate person. Jahil, ignorant, would be enemy of ulama. And Fasik, a sinner, would be enemy of religious people or pious people. And we see that, that this happens, that these type of two groups, two different people, they are enemies of each other, they always fight with each other, they don't agree with each other. Oh, all the five are addressed here that all five of you would be enemies of each other. That means Shaitan would be enemy of human being and human being would be enemy of Shaitan Similarly, snake would be enemy of human being and enemy of peacock and human being would be enemy of peacock and snake. So that is the explanation of this ayah karima that they would be enemies to each other. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُسْتَقَرٌ from this part of the ayat, we understand that all of them would be living in the ground. I mean, on the ground or on the earth. Some on top of the ground. For example, living human beings, they live on top of the ground. Some would live under the ground like snakes they always make a hole and live under the ground and even jinns many jinns they live under the ground in the holes even though sometimes a human being can be 
in the air or peacock can be in the air because they can fly. You can also fly, you can sit in the aeroplane and fly. But it, it is still on the ground. It is still on the earth because whether you in the air, that air also belongs to the earth. Everything is connected to the earth. So it still would be regarded as being on the earth even if one is flying. From these, this Aya Karima which we have discussed, we understand that Adam alayhi salam came out of the Jannat which is proven from quran e kareem with a hadith and the research of ulama e kiram and the cause of it has been mentioned that hazrat hawwa radiyallahu ta'ala anha ate that fruit first and then she offered to hazrat adam alayhi salam and he ate it and the effect was that jannati garment which they were wearing was snatched away. And Hazrat Adam and Hazrat Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, they became naked. And now because of the embarrassment, they covered themselves with the leaves of fig tree from the jannat. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed them. Oh Adam, oh Hawa, were you not stopped from this tree? Did I not tell you that shaitan is your open enemy? Do not be deceived by him. Then at that time, there was no explanation except or excuse. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered angels that all of them should be brought down on the earth. So Hazrat Adam salam was brought down in a city in Sri Lanka called Saran Deep on, on the mountain. And Hazrat Hawa was sent down on the coastal area in Arabia in Jeddah and the peacock was sent down on Marjul Hind and Shaitan was sent down in the jungles of Mesan which were at some distance from Basra near that wall of Yajuj and Majuj and snake was sent down in Sajistan or Isfahan. That is the reason that at those places snakes are still in very large numbers. The most of the snakes you find there. Hazrat Adam alayhi salam was put into the difficulty of agriculture that he must plow the land and he must sow the seed and he must do this hard work and Hazrat Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anha she was burdened with hairs the menses pregnancy shortage of akal intellect and less share in inheritance. And as far as the snake is concerned, its feet were removed. Before the snake was very beautiful animal when it was in the Jannat. Snake and peacock both used to serve Hazrat Adam and Hazrat Hawa radiallahu ta'ala 
So its feet were removed and it was forced to move or walk on the stomach and its food, the, the sand was made its food, the soil. And the feet of peacock were made ugly. And as far as the shaitan is concerned, his face was distorted. Originally, shaitan was very beautiful, but then its face was disfigured and it became very ugly. As I said now, Mawla Ali Shere Khuda radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said that the land of India means subcontinent is so green and so powerful to grow the fruits, the vegetable, the crop and it has oud oud grows in India, in those places. He said, it's because when Hazrat Adam salam was sent down on that piece of land, he had some leaves from Jannati trees with the air. That leaf flew and whichever tree that leaf touched, that tree became fragrant. And Adam salam brought several different type of seeds from Jannat, three types of fruits and hajr aswad which is the black stone and asa which later on became the asa of Hazrat Musa salam. It was ten 10 meter long, that asa, that stick. And he brought some gold and silver from Jannat. And actually that gold and silver became the seed for the gold and silver in the ground. And some tools of agriculture. So these were some of the things that Hazrat Adam salam brought from Jannat. Some, some of the fruits were that could be eaten directly without peeling and there are no seeds inside. Some are that you eat from the top and the pit is inside like date tree. And uh, some seeds, uh, some fruits were such that peel is on top like banana and inside is the fruit. So all that different type of fruits that you get in the dunya is an example of the fruits of Jannat. So Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal with this uh, story of Hazrat Adam al -Islam, we have learned so many beautiful things and it's so interesting and there are many more discussions pertaining to this subject as the time of the Silsala is about to end but inshallah azawajal we would next week continue with the same story with the same discussion and the explanation of the same ayah karima we make dua that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand quran -e kareem and to practice upon quran -e kareem and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us chance to read Quran Kareem correctly with Tajweed and love Quran Kareem. Ameen Bijahin Nabil Ameen Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sallam Sallu Alal Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala Ala Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sallam Salatum Wa Salaman Alaika Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasulullah Wa Ala Alika Wa Sahabika Ya Habib Allah It's my plea that the message of the Quran be Spread.